did they take him? Do you see Anduin? They dragged him down. I lost track of him. Ash! We can't let them reach Meraldar. Blast them apart! Darkness hungers. Let's give Zalatath's forces a taste of their own shadows. We've beaten them back. Let's get Anduin! Hold on. We don't know what's down there. Reinforcements are on the way. We could wait- We'll lose his trail! You're right! Let's make those monsters pay for everything they've done! Flames! They were ready for us. Brace yourselves! Anduin follows in his father's footsteps, but is now lost to us within Ashkahet, home base of the Nerubians. Their origin comes from the days that the old gods ruled the world, and from their blighted forms came horrific creatures like the Faces Ones, but also the Akir. After the old gods' defeat and imprisonment by the Titans, the Akir would nestle across Azeroth and bask in the lingering influence of the old gods. Yashiraj's influence would turn them into the Mentid. Kafun's influence turned them into Karaji, but under the influence of the old god Yaxaran, the Akir turned into the Nerubians. You're probably familiar with the Nerubians from Northrend, the dungeons Ankahet and Azul Nerub. Those Nerubians were led by the king Anubarak, and they fell upon hard times with the arrival of the Lich King. While the Nerubians proved to be immune to his plague, the necromantic powers of the Lich King did prove effective. So, his armies chopped away at the Nerubians, the fallen were resurrected to serve their enemy. King Anubarak knew that this war wasn't playing out in their favor, so he asked Queen Nephorus and Ashkehet for aid. But when Ankehet called, Ashkehet refused to answer, believing that Anubarak had asked for this war and that they should not throw away the lives of their people. We can only wonder if the aid of Ashkehet would have made a difference and changed the course of history on Azeroth, but the Queen's refusal meant the demise of Anubarak and his undead resurrection into the traitor king. That empire Northrend did not do so great. And while Ashkehet has not really been mentioned before, it's not impossible to imagine that the Nerubians spread out further than just one of their kingdoms. In-game books within Ashkehet reveal more about that unknown part of the history. Queen Anubazek the first queen of true Nerub. In ancient times, before the children of stone, or the strands of queens and sages, there was an empire born of darkness. It was a time of death and war. Hosts of armies swarmed in number 16 and 5 times the people of the Lost Kingdom when this record was soon. From that crucible of darkness rose a leader who foresaw where the darkness would lead. Anubazek was a unique creature, crafted with the power of a lord and the memory of a sage. They were made to command and lead legions into battle that they would not survive. And so Anubazek defied the Dark Ones that had helped in her creation. With her army, she led them deep into the earth and away from the front of a lost battle. Spurned by endless war, unwilling to sacrifice more of her people, Anubazek would become the first queen of the true Nerubians. Thus, our people became a people and would never be puppets of the Empire of Darkness again. Some of this information is going to be up for interpretation, so please call me out in the comments if you think I got something wrong. An empire born of darkness, I imagine that that is the Black Empire, the time in which the old gods ruled Azeroth and the Akir emerged out of their blighted forms. Their numbers were much greater than what they have now in the Lost Kingdom. Apparently Ashkahet is the last kingdom of living Nerubians. Other books from the Domain of Order suggest that history has been purged of the advancements of the Black Empire, and the age was merely painted as one of chaos and misery, a pernicious blight that the Keepers eradicated. Yet the Nerubians, 
they paint a similar picture. The old gods loved chaos and battled with each other, using the enslaved elemental lords, keeping the surface of Azeroth blighted and chaotic. Perpetual twilight descended upon the world, and it spiraled into an abyss of suffering and death. And so their minions would be sent to die in battle over and over and over again. Queen Anubizek wanted more for her people. And while defying the old gods, defying her creators, she took them away. We've seen similar behavior with the Nerubians in Northrend, who also stepped away from Yaxaran and lived their own lives. But that does make me wonder how the evolution from Akir into Nerubian happens. Evolving under the influence is a vague description. Perhaps it means evolutionary steps, like what they did to the queen and the others, evolve and elevate them for the might of the swarm. Who is to say? But the first queen of True Nerub embody both the sage and the lords. For the lords, we are Nerubians, not the mindless Karaji or the swarming mentids. Yet there comes a time when our individualism will not win wars. Thus came the lords, masters of war and swarm commanders of trained insects. These lords dominate a battlefield. Only those with the greatest skills in leadership and command will be transformed into a lord, and of those, specializations emerge. Scarab lords, war shells and hulks of various types have all risen to command and crush our foes in times of war, and manage our endless swarms of minion insects in times of peace. The brawn and strategist on the battlefield, the Nerubian lords, look down upon the other evolved insect races. And then for the sages? In ancient times of the old empire, before Nerubians were Nerubians, there was the sage. A need rose where the ancestor of Nerub required a shape that could wield magic against foes, evoke the dark energies of the ancient ones, and pass this knowledge on to future sorcerers. Crafted a folded flesh and warping of life through dark alchemy, these transformed sages were priests, mages, and harbingers of the ancient ones. Now they are the scholars of the lost kingdom the keepers of power and wisdom that let the kingdom thrive while remembering what it used to be, capable of weaving strands of knowledge to pass between one another. The sages have become custodians of techniques no written word could capture. I always like to imagine how this would look like in an RTS setting rather than an MMORPG. Imagine unlocking the right upgrade station so that the Akir can become sages and support your troops on the battlefields. It reminds me a lot of the swarm from StarCraft. Now here, they do confirm that the sages existed before the Nerubians were the Nerubians, and they have a neat little trick they can do, passing on knowledge through strands of memory. One lifetime is not enough to master the arts of magic, alchemy, and the many etiquettes and disciplines required to run the Last Kingdom. Thus, we use strands to pass the memory from one Nerubian to the next. With a strand comes the legacy of our people. Only our sages and queens may pass strands from one generation to the next. Their forms refined to be able to weave and incorporate even the most impossibly small elements of memory. This is not a natural process, but a project that requires time, dedication, resources and intention. In this way, only chosen strands are passed on to the next generation. Knowledge of how to create strands for other forms of our people that was lost with the fall of the Black Empire. The line of sages and royalty get to remember their full history, or at least if they choose to, and they get the benefit from the knowledge and experience of the past. But then, in their history, there was Queen Zaltra, the Queen of Cobwebs. Zaltra. May her name never be spoken with grace, but as a lesson in hubris. In her arrogance, she strove to conquer the children of stone. Her mandibles of greed broke upon their carapace of metal. Against the will of her people, she drove the Nerubians to war. So began the first recorded civil war in Nerubian history. The queen attempted dominance over her subjects, wielding a sense of power. The lords and sages refused. The dream of conquest was not theirs, and so they turned against Queen Zaltra, unwilling to slay her for fear of losing the knowledge of her strand. Zaltra was sent into exile until she would part with the knowledge held within her body. Many claim Zaltra still walks the depths of the earth, lording over the cobwebs of old, waiting for the day when her dreams of conquest might come to fruition. Then an addendum by Isvan the High Sage. While Zaltra's body was never found, the knowledge of her strand lost. It is confirmed that no Nerubian queen is immortal. 
age would have taken Zoltra many centuries before this addendum was added. There is a small chance her knowledge may still be preserved within the strands of her corpse, mummified and waiting, a treasure only the Nerubian people would understand. Similar to the Mantids rising up against their queen when she let them down a path that they figured was not right for the people, so too did the Nerubians of the past rise up against Zoltra. Isvan the High Sage believes that since Nerubian queens can die, then that must mean that Zaltra is long gone, and perhaps somewhere in the caverns we would find a corpse. The strands of knowledge mummified. However, we do run into a mad Nerubian above Farron's advance, who says that she was queen before they cast her out, exiled her. They feared power and strength. I had both in spades. I was going to lead us above out from the dark, but no, they said I was mad. They said they did not wish to fight battles, crouching in their dusty webs, moaning about missing the days of old, when all they needed was to seize the day. But no, they sit in the dust, and I sit here, forgotten. Be gone now, let this ancient one be. Wonder if some way, somehow, we could get the strand of knowledge out of her. Perhaps if we could use, like, the right pheromones. I did notice on the vendor there's the pheromones of the queen for a ridiculous amount of uh, the currency. Maybe this is, like, a, a secret waiting to be unlocked. Because you'd imagine that a large part of that knowledge, of that history, of that experience, that was never passed on to the next generation. The next queen of the Nerubians... They had to start from the beginning again. But that is that is an assumption. But imagine, you know, if we could actually get Zoltra's memories and experience and do something with it. Over the ages, the Nerubians and Ashkahet have built up the empire further and further upon layers of the previous ones, which reflects someone's status within their Nerubian empire. The higher you live, the better off you are, right? The more powerful, the more influential. Whereas the lower that you go, the weaker and worse off you are. But you can spot echoes of past cities like Arakara. What's interesting to remember is that tale of the Irvin Traegar that hadn't tried to answer the call of presumably Azeroth, yet before they were able to reach the destination, the Nerubians snuffed them out. What lies hidden underneath all these layers of the city? What roads could we open by overcoming these threats? Hard to say, but potential for the future. Another potential can be found when we pay attention to the road leading into Ashkahet. You might spot some oceanic leftovers, some interesting routes, and perhaps designs that remind you of the Emerald Dream. Flying up closer will actually put you to sleep. And the mysterious guardians that showed up to save us, they might have a connection to a legend added in a book, once more with Dragonflight, the legends of Alun Ahir. This tale speaks of a time in which the Titans were bringing order to Azeroth, battled with the darkness of the old gods and their so-called Black Empire. Seeking to bring hope and healing, the Titan Aeonar carried a gift given to her by Elune, a branch of Kahanir, the Mother World Tree. The Titan believed that the influence of life would drive the darkness away. So, she reached down her hand and shaped the soil of Azeroth, planted a branch where it could be fed by river and sky. The branch swiftly grew into a tree, its roots extending deep, deep below the surface. Aeonar smiled, for everywhere that the roots stretched, new life emerged. She called the tree Aluna here in honor of her great love. Now Alun is still quite a mysterious goddess, mainly known as the goddess of the night elves, but she's also known across the Warcraft universe as different races on different planets worship the goddess Alun. She's also an entity connected to the domain of the Emerald Dream, the cosmic domain of life, yet where once we were told the dream was like a blueprint for Azeroth's development, these days it seems like the Emerald Dream that we know, that it is part of the domain of life which the Titans managed to order. Go beyond its orderly borders and you would find the actual domain of life, whatever shape or form it may take. It has not been confirmed yet though, but we'll probably find out more if and when we're gonna go into the domain of life. Either way, planting this branch, it would have been great for Azeroth, or so Aeonar fought, but Amantul wasn't having any of this. When he saw what Aeonar had done, he chided her. This is not order, he bellowed. You have infected this world with uncontrolled chaos. The High Father took hold of the world tree's trunk and tore it from the earth. Aeonar wept bitter tears that rained down upon the resulting crater, but as she peered down upon the sundered earth, the Titan realized the truth that she did not share with the High Father. Though he had destroyed the tree, its winding roots still held firm beneath the soil, 
hidden from Amantul's gaze. As the forces of the Titans wage war against the Black Empire, Eonar bid her keeper Freya to watch over the crater and nurture the life that had blossomed there. Below grounds, the roots fed upon the tears of Eonar and grew strong. The war was long, but in the end, the Titans claimed victory. And Eonar was pleased, knowing Elune's legacy would endure. It is said that much later, as the world entered a new age, mysterious guardians arrived who dedicated their lives to protecting the roots. While it's not been confirmed, it is likely that the guardians mentioned in this tale are the newly added Hornier, creatures that are very much to themselves, kind of against tradition to make contact with outsiders, but times are changing. The Nerubians are gathering the blood of the old gods. The roots are threatened, so Orwenium is willing to break tradition, save our lives, and accept our aid. You have shown your true form, Orwenia. This is forbidden. The black blood spreads deeper every day. We need their aid. We need nothing from them. Enough. We both know our charge. They are of this world, and they too seek to defend it. On higher. She speaks with the song of the world. You know it, as do I. The others will hear of this. At least it will not be the first tradition we have broken. Go, all of you. I will join you soon. We'll most likely party more with the Harnier in the future. For now, we need to focus on what the Nerubians are doing. The blood of the slain old gods has the effect to transport us into a different realm of reality. I would compare it to the Upside Down from Stranger Things, but it's also being used to empower and ascend the Nerubians. A gift that is offered by Zalatov, but not everyone is down with this new paw for their people. Their queen Nefris not only refused to aid Anubarak, she also refused to stand with the Black Empire during what I presume to be Battle for Azeroth. After this refusal, for some reason, hard times followed for the Nerubians, and while Zolotov offered her a solution, similarly to how she offered a solution to the High Speaker, at the small price of turning New Irvin into Skardin, this time the Queen was wise enough to refuse the Harbinger's offer. But now the Queen is dead, and her daughter Ansrek has taken over. She is willing to work with Zalatov, and those that are found worthy, they're now being elevated into brand new forms. Yet, some amongst the Nerubians, they share a similar vision as the late queen. They do not believe that this is the right course for their people. How could it be when these new Nerubian forms can't even produce pheromones? A race that communicates by touch and smell, surely they shouldn't give up that legacy. I specialize in little pushes, dear. Every plan is a tapestry, and I am adept at nudging and tugging just one thread at a time. You, though, are less of a tugged thread, and more of a lit match. The Harbinger's shadowy venom has stained Anzarek's tapestry. That is why I sought you out. I require a stray ember, and you need a friend in the dark. That's where we come in, being allowed to join Widow Arachnai, Mistress of Secrets, with her plans of rooting out the corruption and learning more about Nerubian life as we go. Some of the people that were taken during the assault on Daladan, they've managed to escape, but not by chance, as General Anubisal is sabotaging his replacement, Sefkal. My orders were clear, and yet more overcrawlers regularly slip from our grasp. Failure! Unacceptable! Not only does this shame you, it shames me. Which means no one will hear of it. Clean up this refuse and get it out of my sight. And if you breathe a word of this to anyone, your neck. The Ascended is powerful indeed, but how can they take a Nerubian that can't produce his own pheromone seriously? What an interesting delivery. Everyone, return to your duties, now! Shh, I'm hiding here! I know you're alive. The question is, are you useful? so gross! What starts off with a rivalry, it quickly evolves into figuring out that Zefkal, 
only does things for himself, like a rabbit meant it, but not for the good of all the Rubians. So, we go around saving more of our friends and allies in need. Flynn Fairwind, Daladan's captives, even Monty Gaslow. After messing up enough for Zefko, we return to the Weaver, who has received a most interesting invitation from the Vizier. This is someone within the inner court, trusted by Queen Ansrek, that would be a great boon to have as an ally on our side. It is a risk, but one that we're willing to take. Ah, welcome. I'm Executor Nisrek, also known as the Vizier. Your willingness to meet humbles me. My friend, you made it. Sorry for the cloak and dagger. We just couldn't risk being discovered. Time is short. Here are pheromones that will allow you into the bazaar. Apply them. Zalatath is a problem, to be certain. But the Queen is not being influenced. She has made a choice she believes in. The Weaver will not be pleased. But answer must also be eliminated. Back away from him, creature! Now! Listen to me and lower your bow! He's an ally! An ally? Delaran fell because of them! Illyria, we can end this war, but not if you lose that arrow. Fine. But you best have a good explanation for this. All right, Anduin. Talk. I don't expect you to understand. But I just... In that moment, with the airship... Maybe some part of me thought that would be enough for the light to shine on me again. That... That maybe if I did what my father... But the light didn't come. I found myself here instead. His actions impressed me so much that I simply had to redirect his prison transport. Farron told me I needed to get out of my head about everything. I think she was right. Maybe the light hasn't returned to me, but this... This is what I'm best at. Allying with monsters? Helping people. I'm not going to let Zalatath ruin a civilization, no matter how monstrous it appears. And you feel unworthy of the light. I still don't trust these Nerubians, but I trust you. And that's enough for now. Anduin has far more to offer than just a strong connection to the light. Capable of seeing beyond just monsters, he believes the Nerubians are just as deserving of saving as anyone else. Their culture might seem weird and monstrous to us, like the ancient old tradition of eating your first love so that they stay with you forever, but it doesn't mean that all of them are our enemy. Similar to the days that we managed to ally with the Mentid, so too do we learn more about the Nerubians, but also that there are Niffen and Drogbar within the city. With the Vizier's aid, we sabotage some of the Queen's propaganda. If you've done the Sudamar storyline during Legion, this storyline should feel very similar. And then we check in on our Ascension Day speech. And this I promise to you all. With our renewed strength, our kingdom shall be reborn! I can feel the Void's influence upon her. She's Zalatath's creature now. How could you know that? Valyria, we need to go. Maybe you're right. Wait. She's here. What? Zalata. No! For Khadgar.
get the queen to safety! Move! Now! Repel the intruder! The vizier left us flyers to escape with at the end of this path. The entire city is closing in. We'll need to fight our way there. Overcrawlers! They would assassinate our beloved queen! Illyria, what happened back there? This isn't you! I had to take the shot! It was my chance to make up for Dalaran. For Khadgar! We can only imagine what is running through Illyria's minds, as the whispers of the Void are constantly assaulting her, and Zalatov has shown to just be this impossible force to overcome, capable of instantly disarming her, making her crawl on the ground, toying with Illyria, and given the vibe that what we're doing right now is not the main show. I'll slay you myself! The Fang will arrive to your corpses! But... I have- Through the webs! We are not yet safe. I don't expect you to understand what I'm dealing with. But I do. I know all about blaming myself for things I couldn't possibly control. Let's try- Wait! Get back! Champion! Slip through and take out the commander! We'll keep that swarm at bay for you. No! My swarmlings! Come back! Finally! Now I can get a clear shot. Shield me! Protect me! Valyria, are you thinking of giving up? Giving in? I know what it's like. I can't fix things for you. But you know who you are. And I can listen. If you need me. What is that? Taste the venom of my fangs, over crawlers. What now? Our flyers are dead! Jump! Have you lost your... All right, fine, jumping it is. here. Am I? You've slain hundreds to find me. Was that really all for Khadgar? Or is it just your nature to destroy? Come, Malaria. Embrace who you truly are. Valeria. Valeria. I know who I am. Alive. Let's get to shore. Well, we've certainly kicked the spider's nest. 
Salatath won't wait long before striking again. Illyria. What happened back there? She invited me into the darkness. Said I was already halfway there. And I'd be lying if I said that wasn't partly true. That by embracing the void to pursue her, I had to cast aside all I care for. You, Theresa, Terralian, Arator, Kadga. Dalaran wasn't your fault. Can you blame me for wishing I had prevented it? For wondering if the Void could have alerted me to Zalatath? No, I've been... I understand that feeling. More than you know. For so long, I thought I had to choose between two paths. Stay with my loved ones, or walk alone in the Void. Zalatath sought to force that choice upon me. But I see now that there is only one path forward. The Void is a part of me, as is my love for my family. I can and must walk with both, no matter what Zalatath whispers in my ear. It can be hard to find your footing in the darkness. Just remember, Illyria, we are always here to lend a hand. It's anyone's guess what Zalatath wants to accomplish. But safe to say that Illyria still has some part to play. For now, she manages to hold on to her sanity. And while the threats in front of us may not be the only things cooking, they are threatening indeed. We're going to need the support of the Alliance and the Hordes. We're going to need more earthen power if we want any chance at storming the Nerubar Palace and stopping this Nerubian threat. The max level campaign, where we might go next, and so much more. That's gonna be a story for another day. So for now... Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Our mutual agent has informed me that their allies from above will storm our realm for Zalatath's head. However, disposing of Zalatath will not be enough to save our people. It is Amsarek that is leading us to our downfall. Let's make haste, champion. We must notify our allies of what we've uncovered. You don't know our queen as I know her. Our people go missing. Dark forces walk the palace. Answer it only thinks of power. But she is still Nephris's blood. I is there no redeeming her? We blinded our tired hearts from the truth, Widow. Anserek is nothing like her mother. Indeed, but we three can work together to restore Nefares's ideals instead. I understand. We must slay Anserak and sever the threads that shackle our people. <laughs>